Tyranid Prime is a key command organism for the Hive fleets. It acts as a node for the command of the Hive mind. A mere presence of this warrior organism strengthens the psychic link between lesser Tyranids. And in this video we'll be painting the terrifying Tyranid Prime in the colours of Hive Fleet Leviathan to battle ready. And we'll also be adding a few extra techniques to take your models to the next level. If you're new to painting, you can check out the Citadel Colour Painting Essentials videos to learn all about paints and techniques. The paints we'll be using are on the screen right now. Remember that we're painting to match the box art, but you can paint your models however you like. Any additional equipment that we've used is also on the screen, but feel free to use whatever brushes you're comfortable with. And if you don't have mediums, you can swap these out with water instead. The first thing we need to do is undercoat the models. And for this colour scheme, we've used Wraithbone. It's a nice warm undercoat that can get us ready for the contrast colours we'll be using. It's also a great idea to have a pot of Wraithbone to hand, just in case we need to do any tidy ups later. We'll start by applying a base coat of Wraithbone over our model. This just gives us an overall finish that will match the pot in case we need to tidy up any sections, as the spray has a slightly different finish. You'll only need one thin coat to fully cover over, so don't worry about being neat at this stage. Just make sure you get all of those membranes and the underside of the model coated. Now we'll add a thin down layer of Magos Purple. We'll combine two parts contrast medium to one part Magos Purple. This will give us a great colour to settle into those recesses, but not to overwhelm the upper areas of the skin. We'll be applying this all over, so we can get it into every recess and under around those carapace edges, so don't worry about being neat at this stage around those details. Just make sure the contrast doesn't pull too heavily, as we want a nice light pinky purple tone to the skin. After it's dry, you can reapply Wraithbone into the wing membranes, ready for painting later. You can also tidy up any areas that are heavily saturated with that contrast, just like the ribs and the upper arms. As a quick extra detail, you can add a cheeky dry brush of Corax White over the model. We're doing this now so it can be messy before we paint the smaller details. By using circular motions, we can get all of those raised areas covered without being too heavy handed. This is a subtle effect, so if you want more definition, you can apply a second dry brush. Just don't apply too much pressure or we can end up with an unwanted lumpy texture. Next we'll use Nagaroth Knight for the carapace armour and the wing tips. Just remember to thin this paint down slightly as it is a base paint, and apply multiple thin layers to build up a solid colour. By using several sizes of brushes we can help avoid making these mistakes. Then we'll thin down one part Nagaroth Knight with three parts Lamian Medium for a thin glaze then we'll apply it over those bony areas of the wings, so it's nice and thin but still has a rich purple tone to it. We just want to apply it to the very tips of the wings, so don't go too far down. With the carapace painted, we can move on to Abaddon Black for the claws and the hooves. You can also darken down the eye sockets with this colour as well. Just like with Nagaroth Knight, we want to thin down our paint and apply multiple thin coats in the same way. You can also paint the insides of any open mouths to help define the area for some paints later on. Now we'll add Bugman's Glow to the wing membranes. We'll thin it down a little bit more than we normally would. This gives us a slightly more translucent coverage, letting some of that Wraithbone base coat show through. Building up the colour with a few thinner coats as we go. As it's slightly thinner than normal, we want to try and control it as it dries, but it shouldn't cause too much issue, so apply smaller amounts as we add each coat. After those layers have dried, we'll add Reichland Flesh Shade into the folds of the wings. We'll only need a small layer brush and a small amount of paint to get the effect that we're after, just giving those wings some definition. You can add a second layer into those recesses if you want more shadows as well. Next we'll paint the teeth with Corax White with a small layer brush. Picking out the teeth will help them stand back out from the black base coat, finishing off that face with a little bit of work. By using Abaddon Black earlier really helped the Corax White stand out more than if it was over and in a Magos purple. You can also use Wraithbone if you want the teeth to look more dirty. And for a bit more detail we'll paint those eyes with Flash Gits Yellow. We just want a small amount of paint on the tip of the brush so we can dot it into the eye socket. Your Tyranid Prime is now battle ready. 
You can stop here, or you can add these extra cool details to take your model to the next level. Now we'll add a bit of definition to that carapace armour, with an easy highlight of Selenesh Grey. We can do this by thinning down the paint and applying it in small choppy lines around the edge of the carapace plates. You can see this gives it more of a natural highlight than normal, giving this a chipped chitinous effect. Just make sure you use the smallest brush you have and keep that paintbrush pointed. After the first highlight is dry, we'll add some simple highlights to the claws and hooves with Thunderhawk Blue. We don't need to highlight every edge or detail, so we'll pick out the most prominent or visible. Just make sure that your paint is thin and roll your brush onto the palette. This will help you control the amount of paint on the brush, and it helps keep that point stable as well. And there we are, your Tyranid Prime is finished, and ready to command the hive to consume and destroy without a second thought. You can see that our model is based in Armageddon Dust. And if you'd like to learn more about technical paints, you can check out our video all about them. For more tutorials, tips and techniques, head to citadelcolor.com or head to your local Warhammer store where our amazing staff will be happy to help you. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.